Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A show on Inside the Birds platform. I'm one of your hosts, Jason Avant, and I'm here with my teammate, my man, Quinn Michael Q. Say what's up to the people. What's going on, everybody? Back at it again, man. Ah, I'm, I'm just excited. Can't wait for us to get started with the show. Got a lot of good stuff for you guys. Let's Before we get into the show, we have to do some house cleaning. Thank you to Jeff and to Adam, Greg, Josh, everyone that's behind the scenes, inside the birds. Thank you guys to Friends Bar down in on uh, Columbus, Delaware Ave, and uh, the, the pregame show. Thank you guys. Kenny's the owner there. Make sure you guys check out Friends Bar. Also, um, just want to say thank you to the fans that are tuning in. Make sure that you send your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com. Follow us Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also YouTube. Q, let's get into this episode. First thing we're going to talk about is the Kelly Green. You have on the Kelly Green hat. How excited were you to see the Kelly Green come back to the link? Man, it was a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. I love seeing that color, man. The only thing that that I I, I kind of got a little upset about is that we never got the chance to wear them when we, when we played, man. Them things was looking well, sweet out there. Well, I don't know if you did. I think you may have been gone. I did. The, we had the one game with the against the Packers. All right, yeah, but I, I didn't consider those the 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 real Kelly Greens. Like I'm talking like the Reggie White, the Reggie White Kelly Greens, but. Um, but anyway, man, they, they looked nice. They looked awesome out there, and yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah, um, there was a couple of players where Devontae Smith said, "This should be our uniform all, all the time." <laughs> they liked it. They like this should be our uniform all the time, and you can you can freak that green out too. You add some black and Kelly green. You add some, you know, you can yeah, freak that man. green out now. Come on, bring it out. Let's go. Yeah. Let's make it a full time thing. <laughs> yeah. So the Eagles against most bets that went in a lot of money went in to the dolphins this week very mm -hmm. disrespectful at times you know the home team automatically gets the three points it was mm -hmm. at one and a half for most of the week two two and a half went up to three right before the game that type of thing disrespect a lot of disrespect now i have to be honest if the, the the Dolphins lost their whole left side. You know, Armstead, Wynn, um, the center was out. So they lost a lot of people in that game. And right before the game, we had news that Xavier Howard was out and also the center was out. So I thought the Dolphins would have could have beat the Eagles if they had everyone healthy. Uh, just coming off the, some of the points they were putting up in with the way our team was. But I think our team stepped up to the plate and dominated them up front. And that's what I said in a pregame show. I said the Eagles have to be able to stop the run with six and also get after Tua. They were able to accomplish that, got the win. We're going to delve in that a little bit more, but the win, 31-17. Let's talk about the defense, who was the stars of the show. The defense, Sean Desai, and the defense, the whole defense kind of balled out. And that's your side of the ball. Let me see what you think about the way that they stopped the run game and also limited Raheem Mostert um, for most of the ball game. His stat line, I believe the whole stat line was like 12, 45 yards rushing. Um, and I believe he had like nine rushers or so. So um, we're able to limit him drastically. He averages six yards a carry. So they were able to, to, to limit him a lot. So what do you think about the defense? Yeah, you know, I agree. I mean, he, he went uh, nine for 45. Um, Listen, man, I think, you know, as a player, you know, you 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 hear, you see all week. That's all we, I mean, we even talked about on the show. Like, I don't know, man, these boys got a lot of speed. And I think this defense took that as a challenge. And I think this defense really put on, you know, put the, brought their work, pit, their uh, work pail, put their, you know, blue collar shirt on and went to work this week. And, um, you know, I it was a, it's a beautiful game plan by Sean Desai. I think that this front can show how dominant they can be now you 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 did mention you know there's a lot of guys injury but hey man next guy got to step up and we still got to do our job so you know I think the defensive line is really what set the tone 
Um, I think that, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, I think the linebacker play has been stepping up each week with more and more experience. And, um, you know, I think Sean Desai, you know, he's making, he, he made some really cool adjustments. Um, some stuff that I wasn't expecting to see, like a couple of times seeing sweat dropping in the coverage. We saw yeah. um, Reg dropping in the coverage. Make so tackle, just some yeah. cool little change-ups that kind of throws you for a loop if you're not used to seeing it. So um, I thought the game plan was great. I thought that the defense played phenomenal and physical downhill. And, um, you know, it was just a masterpiece for me. Yeah, from the, from the run game perspective, the thing that I love most about it is that they were able to stop the run with six, but they didn't even need the other two people. The linebackers weren't getting there as fast as the defensive tackles and the defensive ends were getting there. Like, if you look at the run game, most of the stop that happened in that game were D were D linemen. Yeah, yep. Like, and, and that's phenomenal because they took it upon themselves. That's a, a big weight and load to bury on those shoulders right so um the one thing that i that i thought that the adjustment that sean Desai made was made the defensive ends namely josh sweat and namely hassan reddick when they saw the motion yep. they went vertical yep so one guy is going to outflank you the guy that's in motion but there's always the next person that's coming and they were able to beat that guy and stay vertical in order to turn it back or run right into the ball carrier. Yep. So they weren't they weren't being fooled. They didn't say they they weren't tricked by it. They was like, oh, the motion is not my responsibility. But when I see that motion, I'm going vertical first. I'm not going to rush the passer first. I'm going vertical first, and then if it's a pass, I'll 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 converge and 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 go down into my rush. But that them sending those defensive ends straight up the field and run game was like the the best thing that could happen because they're a perimeter run team. And when when Hassan Reddick went out and Brandon Graham got went in, that's when they started to hit those runs. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and again, like you hit the I mean, you hit the nail on the head there with the with the outside run game, perimeter run game. That's what they that's that's all they try to do, and so. Um, you know, another cool thing that I saw, kind of mentioned it earlier, but when they were in, when Miami went to empty a lot of times and they motioned out of the backfield, that's a lot of times where we were getting the guy pulled out. And so what I think that does too, is it helps our linebackers underneath and with our defensive ends being able to basically shut off the outside run, it keeps our linebackers in the middle of the field, like we've talked about before, where they're able to play a little bit faster downhill. But you're right. I mean, they didn't even need to really get downhill because the interior linemen were just getting to the rock. They're getting there. Yeah. Um, they were assisting with with the weight, pushing them in the back. <laughs> 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 All right. So uh, let's talk about Tua. Tua has completed 71% of his passes coming in. He's a rhythm passer. How do you think that the Eagles secondary did against Tua and how were they able to limit them? Because Tua ended up being sacked three times, four times. Also, you know, 216 yards passing. Everything was down. One touchdown, one interception. Tyreek Hill, 88 yards. He's been averaging 136 yards a game. Right. So that's 50 yards under basically his average, 48 yards under his average. Right. Jalen Waddle got tagged early in the game. His back got the hurting, mm -hmm. you know, so the, the, talk, talk about the Eagles secondary and how they did against this. Uh, yeah, man. All time great offense. Yeah, I mean, for, the first seven weeks. First off, I mean, I got to give it up to him. Eli Ricks had a phenomenal game and. You know, he was where he Eli Ricks was holding too. <laughs> he got away with about three holding calls. But go ahead. Complete complete the thought. <laughs> hey, listen, if they don't call it, it ain't holding. All right. Yeah. So, but he, <laughs> he the, you know, he, he played a great game. Um, you know, he challenged. And that was the thing that we've been saying all along. And I think across the board for the most part, there were a couple plays here and there where um we, we played a little bit softer, but especially in the middle of the field, I think the linebackers and Eli Ricks at nickel really challenge these underneath routes. And really when you, when you're playing a team like this, right, they're trying to run left, they're trying to run right. They're trying to get an edge to the perimeter. 
And then they got these really fast dudes that just take the top off the defense. And then it just leads voids in the middle of the field. And so when you, when you're playing a team like that, you've got to be physical. You've got to be in tight coverage, even if it's zone, like take the air out of the route, right? We always talk about that. And so we saw a lot of that from the underneath players, secondary is getting physical. They're getting hands, even when they're dropping in zone, they're getting hands on number two, they're getting hands on the receivers as they're getting into their route. And it's, it's messing up the timing. And so I thought that they did a great job secondary wise. Now there was, we'll talk about a couple plays that got behind them, but for the most part, man, I was, I was impressed with what they did. Yeah, I agree with you. They, and that's the thing that we talked about in the pregame show that the only way to stop this team and how fast they motion, uh, because this is the thing they motion and everybody talked about their motion, their motion, their motion. They're doing motion. That's been every type of motion has been done in the NFL. It's already been done. It's just that the timing and the speed that they do it with, that's what makes Miami like dangerous is that when they go Z away motion away from the formation, right? Mm -hmm. They do it so quickly. So he's already in his cadence, right? So he's already white 80 sent him. And by the time he gets to the second white 80, the ball is snapping. He's full speed now. So yeah. it's happening so quick. So you have to be able to get hands on. And Eli Ricks is a big dude, big long frame, you know, defensive back. So him him being able to get hands on and in the second level players, we didn't know most of the game that we were missing Blankenship and yeah. that we were missing Justin Evans, and that we were missing, you know, these guys in the back end. We didn't know. We didn't know, you know, at all because the underneath coverage – was basically the stars of the game because they didn't allow a few times, but they didn't, for the most part, the defensive line getting after Tua in the second level was able to prevent the um the 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 Dolphins from getting up to the second to the third level of defense. And and that was a huge win for us. Absolutely. Yeah, huge win Absolutely. for us. And also we were playing, we were playing the Slay was at 12 yards one time on the play. <laughs> I'm okay with Slay because he can yeah. temper as he know he knows what he's doing. Yeah, back we, yeah, we, we're, we're twelve yards off, off on some plays. I'm like, goodness. <laughs> you, I got to talk about while we're kind of on. I got to talk about it because every time I see him do this, it reminds me when you used to be aligned in this. I want to be like Tyreek Hill. All right, you're Tyreek Hill. Even though you're trying to hide down there in that three point stance. Next to the next to the tackle, we know where you at, dude. Like, <laughs> you can't you can't hide. We know where number ten is at on the field as a defense as a defender. We know where you at at all times. So, come on out, man. Come on, come on out. We know where you at. <laughs> and I remember you used to do that all the time. Yeah, you I used to like come out the hole. I'm trying to, to, trying to see you down, down there. <laughs> yeah, when y'all used to run the dash play on on third and on one. Third, on third, yeah, yeah. Know. Maybe down there. Low. <laughs> <laughs> here you go they're gonna dash again jason's in the three-point stance i know where he's going <laughs> that's funny stuff all right let's get into that let's get into that play because we're talking about on defense talk about the one that the touchdown the tyree hill left side explain that play and what happened and why was it so easy to give up so that's a that's a bracket coverage um and from people that don't know it's a basically a dedicated double like everyone else is kind of playing man and then you have a – it's supposed to be played with a corner pressed outside and a safety at about 10 to 12 yards. And the idea is to funnel the route into the safety, and then now you got two guys on top of this, on top of Tari Kill. So terrible, terrible technique, no press at the line against the fastest guy in the NFL, and he basically just took off and split both, both uh, Edmonds and Bradbury down the middle of the field. And um, I know as a coach, I know Coach Desai, the secondary coach probably was cursing up a storm because if there's nothing else that happens on a bracket coverage or dedicated double, the guy that's double cannot catch the ball. I don't care if you got to PI him. I don't care if you got to push him out of bounds. You cannot let a dedicated double guy get the ball, and especially not for a tug like that. I mean, that was just completely frustrating, but it was just bad technique and bad awareness by both players. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was yeah. frustrating. Terrell Edmonds is not the fastest guy. And Bradbury isn't either, but he's a, a, a dynamic player. That's why I was so surprised. You know what? Tyreek Hill is so scary 
that guys lose their technique and mm -hmm. they stop their feet. I think they're so nervous and not realizing that, dude, he's a football player. Let me just sit back and relax and mm -hmm. play my technique. Like even when guys were trying to tackle him, they were sitting there waiting on him like he's a chicken and they trying to like, like, no, you have to, in, in football, there's a rule that you don't stop your feet and that you press toward, right? And you continue to go toward, you don't break down, you continue to go forward, right? So when Bradbury's in that position, when Tyree gave him a little stutter, his feet stopped and he began to look like, oh, what are you going to do next? Now he stopped and now he's starting again and you yeah. can't catch him starting. You sit back and realize, okay, this he's a football player and all I have to do is sit here until he goes and I can... I can push him, you know what I mean? But he was so worried about getting beat outside and mm -hmm. he didn't get anything on him. And then with a guy that like Terrell, Terrell Edmonds that doesn't run well, you put him in the bomb. Yeah. yeah. You know, at, at that point, you, James Barry, you might as well go and try to tackle him. <laughs> that's what I said. P.I. him. <laughs> yeah. At that point, you know, but that's just, that was just one play. That was one play. Um, yeah. And he had some other plays to make that he didn't make the one that he dropped and when the end zone. Um, some other plays, but overall, the defense did a great job. And I can't say this enough about Coach Sean Desai. And here's the thing that I mentioned this yesterday, multiple times, different platforms, is that we underestimated his, you know, where he came from, Seattle, seeing yeah. Kyle Shanahan twice a year, seeing Sean McVay twice a year, and then to get one of their, you know, protégés and Mike McDaniel's it's not that big of a difference. Now, those other teams' personnel is different, mm -hmm. but the play calling and the concepts are very, very similar. Now, Miami Dolphin does it out of 11. The 49ers does it out of 12. And other, and other the Rams does it out of They do it out of 11, right? Mm -hmm. So you see all of those things. So I, so I believe that he was more prepared for this game than what I gave him credit for, at least. So, yeah. so he great job by him and and crafting a game plan that protected um, Terrell Edmonds, protected Sidney Brown, protected everybody on the outside against that speed. Great job by him. And the defensive lines is are the MVPs of this entire game. Great. Josh Sweat with two sacks ended up with four sacks total. Um, Jordan Davis playing a lot of snaps the last two games. Um, Jordan Davis, there's a lot of things. Monster, right? Ron, now. Like he, he he's he's a whole he's a whole. These guys are problems inside. Yeah. Problems like they try to go inside. It was nothing. It's like look, we're not even trying that anymore. <laughs> we'll figure out to put get two guys in front to go outside, but we're not. We're, this it was nothing doing in there, like nothing. Yeah. They just like right, so, that. No. We're not doing that, <laughs> which is great. That's All right. so That's a great point, too, about, about the side being in Seattle. I didn't even think about that. It's great. Yeah, That's a great being, point. yeah, yeah. you get some, you're some familiarity with these guys. Now, um, Slade, Bradbury, what do you think of the games they played and, and that be the last thing we talked about in defense? I thought I thought they both played well. I mean, like you said, um, games like this, you just can't give up the big play. And, we, you know, there was the one big play there. But they just played like veterans. They played smart. They they took chances when it needed to. Um, you know, Slay got a pick, even though I think, you know, um Waddle ran the incorrect route and brought Slay yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. But he's he's there and he made the play and it was a huge play in the game. And so I think both of those guys did a fun, phenomenal job. And it's kind of what you expect for from veteran uh players. Yeah, from veteran players. He got beat on a um on a post that got called back. And he played as best he could. That little joker can move. He <laughs> broke before he broke, but still had three or four yards separation. That's nothing Slay can do. That's just God's given ability. Like, I don't know what else could he, he could have done because he saw it. He saw the play coming. But yeah. the little dude hit, hit the stick and went, bing, <laughs> and that was it. You know, I'm glad it was – glad it got called back. Yeah, um, but – I love Slay's eyes back because he was in better position than Waddle. And when you're in better position as a DB, that's the perfect time to get your eyes back. And he was able to locate the ball and see the concept. And this concept they run all the time. They like to run those seams, posts with a wheel or, you know, a slant or something like that. Film study, recognize what was going on. Also, great job by 
the reroute and that play that ended up um, allowing most of the go more inside than he actually should have gone, right? So it was a great job by defense overall. Absolutely. Good job. All right, so great job. Um, This is what we want to do. We want to make sure that you guys know about Inside the Tape with our man, our former teammate, Clay Harbor, and also the tape breakdown guru, Greg Costell, that drops every Thursday. Make sure that you take it, um, take that information, set it aside, put it in your calendar. Again, Inside the Tape with Clay Harbor and Greg Cosell. Uh, Also, Launch Trampoline Park, Defer, New Jersey. Check us out. Launch Trampoline Park, Defer, New Jersey. We do it all there. Birthday parties, corporate events, dodgeball, basketball, slam ball, laser tag, everything. Right? Holler at your boy, Defer, New Jersey, Launch Trampoline Park. Hey, it's Jeff Mosher. I love the fall because football's back, but it's also my busiest season between work, kids going back to school, youth sports and activities, There's just not enough time, especially to make a good home-cooked meal. That's why I love HelloFresh. HelloFresh delivers farm-fresh food with pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal 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 recipes. Three, two, one. Hey, it's Jeff Mosher. I love the fall because football's back, but it's also my busiest season between work, kids going back to school, youth sports and activities, There's just not enough time, especially to make a good home-cooked meal. That's why I love HelloFresh. They deliver farm-fresh food with pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes right to my doorstep. No more wasting time at the grocery store because America's number one meal kit helps make home cooking easy, efficient, and affordable. We don't waste time researching new recipes and planning meals. With HelloFresh, the shopping's already done. The perfect amount of ingredients arrive with step-by-step recipe cards. How efficient is that? Plus, HelloFresh saves you time and money. HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout, so you'll get a home-cooked meal without digging deep into your wallet. Don't forget about taste and selection. HelloFresh makes food for meat lovers, seafood lovers, vegetarians, and those who love variety. My personal favorites are the spicy Creole stew, and pecan-crusted trout, two dinners my whole family enjoyed, and we actually had time to sit down together and eat at the table. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Eagles and use the code 50Eagles for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Eagles. Use that code 50Eagles for 50% off plus free shipping. Act now for America's number one meal kit. Q, let's get into the offense, baby. Yeah, man, let's get it, man. All right, so let's let's talk about the Eagles' offense a little bit. All right, did you think that the Eagles intentionally got back to basics and you know with mixing the run game and the passing game? Um, I think that I don't I don't under I don't see how you you can look at it any other way. Just think about this: they only averaged two point nine yards a carry, but they committed to rushing it thirty four times. Now nine quarterback runs you still got 26 of those or or you know 20 23 of those right mm-hmm. but the quarterback was was had some design runs and, and 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 some things in there too but they didn't they didn't get the yards per carry that they want but they didn't give up on it and here's a good example of them not giving up on it later in that game they called a play action pass down the right side in order to seal the game to A.J. Brown. He was able to fight off a defender, catch the ball in between two, and that was like one of the plays that kind of solidified and put a stamp, a a, a dagger, right, in the hearts of the the fins. The reason Mm -hmm. that play was successful is because they never gave up on the run game. The Jets already knew that the Eagles have given up on the run game. The linebackers are already at 10 yards dropping and coverage, right? Underneath the fenders were back there in the seven, seven, seven on seven drops. No, these guys were up toward the line of scrimmage because they knew how potent that the Eagles um, run game could be. And they were still getting yards um, at times. You know, it's just that over a period of time, they they started to get better at the run game as the, as the game went on, talking about the Dolphins. But they didn't give up on it, and it caused a big splash pay to seal the game. And that's the importance of it. So, yes, I believe that they were intentional about trying to get 
you know, 20, 25 carries from a running back, and they didn't give up on it. And so credit to them. Yeah, yeah I agree. I mean, that's tough. That's tough in the game, man, as a, as a secondary guy, when a team is still committed to running the ball, because what that does is it makes you think an extra second. And that extra second mm-hmm. sometimes is the difference between, you know, a guy getting behind you and a guy, you know, making the play and you're not. So I thought that was a great job by them. Yeah, great, great job, great job with that. And and here's the thing about about the run game um, that I, that I didn't mention, uh, Jalen. Jalen is clearly dealing with something, right? And it was <laughs> brought out by him in a press conference, and also AJ Brown gave him up by saying, you know, he's dealing with a lot. And, um, you know, in, which indicating that he was dealing with an injury. So um, I can see that, you know, maybe that that's why the run game hasn't taken off some. Uh, one play that Jalen made a mistake on in the red zone, and I, I know you guys, you know, remember this play, is that he called a quarterback run on a zero blitz. Yeah. They did a good job of disguising, but you can kind of clearly see it if you just sit back and just analyze it and see where defenders are and in 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 relationship because there's always blitzers. You gotta look out in the slot. Where is this guy coming from? Is he stacked behind them? Oh, this could be a zero blitz, that type of thing. You know, so um he was confused on that one play. Um they were a little bit perturbed with him on the sideline. Um but again that's just one of those things that he's seeing it. He thought he saw something, thought he saw cover two. He's like, oh, I'm about to run this in there. They ain't running cover two from the five yard line, man. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. So, like little things like that. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Um, can you before we go on, I'm gonna ask you about this question, right? The interception that he threw, right? The the RPO, then he tried to get the ball out and it got tipped and picked off. Yeah. What what do you make of that play? Because to me, I'm thinking he had to have seen that pressure. He he could have just handed it off. Like, what did he see in that instance that made him try to pull? Well, the the run play was actually going to the same side, which was weird. It wasn't going yeah. back. The it run wasn't... play was going back toward. Oh, it was going toward back the toward, pressure? toward the pressure. Oh. It was it was weird. It was a little weird. It was a little a little weird design. And I'm not saying that's where the ball was was, it was supposed to go. I don't know if it's going to cut back the to the left. It's just that the direction was headed to the right a little bit. Now it was toward the middle, but it was to the right. So I don't know if it was going to, you know, cut back the opposite way. But um, he he thought that he can get the ball out right away, but he didn't realize how fast the guy would get up on him. And mm-hmm. and so yeah, I, I thought he should have gave it just like you to the running back. Right. But here's the thing. If you do keep it, understand where the defender is in relationship to what you're trying to get done. Because that guy was literally breathing on you. You can smell his breath. He's about to hit you. You can't just say, oh, I'm not going to. No, you got to realize that's, you know, like if a guy you pump fake or whatever it is, you you know, that guy's close. You got to do something else. And Jalen doesn't always see people and how close they are to him because his eyes are down the field. And that's one of those plays that you either get down or you throw the ball away, throw it in the dirt, try to get it close to the defender, wrap it around him and throw it in the dirt, whatever it may be. But you got to hit. He wants to make the big play and his eyes get so big. I don't think that he recognizes how close people are to him. Mm -hmm. Like even on that A.J. Brown, on the A.J. Brown throw late in the game, that defender was, like, breathing on him. And if the defender's <laughs> hands would have went high, that ball would have been tipped or his arm would have been hit. The defender ended up going lower than his throwing motion, so he was able to get it off. He got tagged. But if the defender would have put his hands up high, that ball would have been tipped or or mm-hmm. at least something taken off of it. And I just I, – he, he has to get used to – feeling pressure a little bit and understanding where they are. You can't throw that ball when a dude is literally six inches away from you. Yeah. So everybody's like, oh, that's just happenstance. No, that's not happenstance. That's understanding 
your ability, the person's ability, where you are in proximity to other people, because that's avoidable. Makes sense. That was like the only play I was like, man, what was he thinking right there? So I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Yeah. That makes sense. No, no, hold on. That's not the only play. <laughs> Jalen played Jalen played well. So I don't I don't want to I don't I don't want to pile on him because this is not a power on Jalen thing because he played well enough to win. He extended the plays when he had to. He missed a few reads. That's every quarterback in the National Football League. He played winning football for majority of the game. Did make some mistakes. The Eagles were able, the Eagles were able to um, to overcome those mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing that the two things that Jalen did wrong is that play and the fumble. The oh, fumble, yeah. Jalen had literally four or five opportunities to throw that ball away. Yeah. He got to his the back foot. He was able to shuffle up in the pocket, shuffle back, try to split. By that time, the ball is coming out. But there's multiple opportunities for you to throw that ball in a stance towards somebody else. Multiple. Last night, he did something that surprised me because I haven't seen it all year. It was on the left side. They had the play. He threw it out of bounds. That was a best, one of the best plays he played all, did all night. He didn't have to play. He threw it out of bounds, and that's it. He got to learn how to do that more. Yeah. And it yeah. goes back to the same thing, understanding where people are, understanding how much time this is taking, and your clock in your head, uh, this is taking a little bit too long. Let me throw the ball away because somebody's close to me. Mm -hmm. You know, so doing little things like that is going to elevate him, especially if he's dealing with an injury. When you're dealing with an injury, if your knee's hurting, your leg is hurting, your hamstring's hurting, something's hurting, you got to get the ball out of him because you can't escape the way that you want to escape and do the things that you want to do. Even though he does it in his splash plays, what I'm saying is, is that it's not sustainable over the course of 17 games in the playoff. I agree. That's what I'm saying. I agree. All right. All right, let's see. Let's keep going. Ooh, so what matchups? Okay, what matchups did you think that the Eagles exploited the most? Oh, what matchups? Do I, um, could uh, Kadir um, Coho? I thought that it was intentional for them. Kadir Coho, number four, outside corner. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. got a lot of balls caught on them before. Got a lot of passes caught on them, and I thought that was a matchup that they felt that they can take advantage of, and. I want you guys, this is this is a nugget, and it made me so happy because I recognized it within real time. The first two series, because I, when I watched the game, I logged the series and what they're doing in the game. The first two series, the Dolphins brought pressure. One time it was five men, the other time it was six-man pressure, and they dropped somebody out, but it looked like zero, but they dropped somebody out, so I'm not counting as zero. It's like a zero hole. Mm -hmm. On the first two series, on second down, as they were approaching the goal line, right? First two series, the Eagles driving, as they're approaching the, the, the red zone, approaching the goal line, they um, hit them with that pressure and, and stunned their drive. On the third series, the Eagles recognized that they were about to pressure them on second down, and, and they called a play that they can get Dallas got a screen. That wasn't just happenstance. That was doing – studying the stats and watching what your your team that you're playing against is doing and they caught them because they kept a pattern going three times you caught me twice the third time you're not catching me and i'm going to catch you so i was like yo they got him i was so <laughs> hyper about it i was like he's gonna pressure gonna pressure boom caught 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 him in a perfect cover so like little things like that the eagle was able to to um you know expose some 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 tendencies for the Dolphins. Um, also, I thought for the most part, for the most part, I thought that the Vic Fangio defense wasn't hard to see for Jalen Hurts. It's not mm -hmm. many times in this game where, where he was totally confused. Maybe three times. The Jets half the game yeah. he looked confused <laughs> this game i would say three or four plays he he had an outlet or had an idea what the outlet was most of the game so i thought that the coaching i thought we out coached him i thought aj brown was dominant 
Um, I thought getting Dallas involved in the game early and then our sustaining our sustaining drives on third and fourth down is just a brack breaker for most. So yeah. I'll say those things. What about you? I mean, I, I agree with everything you said. To me, I think the biggest, the biggest, I guess, um, I guess I should say X factor for me is especially early in the game. I think that Jalen did a great job of just taking what the defense is giving you. Like uh, he's throwing check downs, you know, the defense is playing off. They're, they're throwing running, they're running five yard hitches. He's taking the stuff that the defense is giving you and not forcing the game. And I think too, like that's, that's going to go a long way for his maturity. When you have, you feel like you have a favorable matchup, right? Jalen Ramsey was out. Um, Xavier Howard was out. But even though you feel like you have an advantage, you're still taking what the defense gives you. And so, that's what make that's what's gonna make him more more dangerous. That coupled with like you said, when the ball's not there, when the play's not there, let it go. Take what the defense gives you. There's gonna be time to take those big shots. There's gonna be opportunities to make those big plays. Once you take what it's just, it's kind of the same concept as running the ball and sticking with the run game, right? It's kind of the same idea, coaching coaching wise and player wise. Like take what the defense gives you, take your shots down the field later in the game. And so I think to me, like that was probably the biggest thing that I came away from the game, um, you know, seeing seeing from from Jalen. Um, and then you know I kind of got off topic there, but I just, no, you're fine. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things I love about the game. All right, I'll kind of hit on this. Let me get your next. I got your next question. All right, no Xavier Howard. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that forced this Miami defense to play a little bit more two deep? Well, well, here's the thing. So everything with Fangio starts off cover four, but they end up in three a lot, and they have a little bit of funky coverage. We talked about this on the pregame, yeah. is that they have this version of cover three that's actually cover four um, to me. And the reason it is because safety stays on one side of the field, the other safety comes up, but it's still like 10 yards away, one playing further back and the other's playing a little bit lower, but it's still – Looks like cover four. Um, everybody yeah. else is playing it like cover four. There's really no flat defender, you know, so it looks like cover four. And um, so he has he has that concept in and of itself. And Xavier Howard is, be is a better, um, you know, a better zone coverage guy than man to man. Now he can do man, um, but he he gets a lot of he gets his hand on a lot of passes. He's picked off a lot of passes. And usually guys that pick off a lot of passes are going to be better at zone coverage, right? Than than man to man. It's just historical. But um overall, I don't think that it was a, a, a big problem for them at all with the cover twos and whatever it was. Not a big problem at all. They were able to to counteract it um without Jalen Ramsey and without Xavier Howard. It's easier now when this team can go man they're gonna be a problem yeah with their d line because the one thing that they can do is get pressure their d line and those fast like david long david long was moving last night yeah <laughs> uh you know on 51 was moving last night so that team uh once they get Jalen ramsey xavier and howard back and they can play man in situations they're they're a problem that's a problem that legit is a problem. So, but I'm glad they were able to get, we were able to get more zone and um, it helped us out for most of the game. I thought that they were afraid in situations because of Jalen. And um, so you can see, you can see that. But here's the thing about man coverage. If Jalen's healthy, do you want to play man? David Long is fast, but he going to get him sometimes. Yeah. You know, so um Got That's pick that. and choose. Got pick and choose. You got pick and choose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Right. AJ Brown. AJ Brown, 125 yards, five straight games. What do you think about it, Q? Phenomenal. <laughs> and you know, you 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 he tied he ties a record for Calvin Johnson and a guy that I didn't know the name of. I forgot his name already. <laughs> I wonder who that is. No, nah, it they put it on TV last uh, night. He's a guy that 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 probably played in the fifties or sixties or something. Yeah, man, he's he's a phenomenal player, man, and and you know, kudos to him for for that. Now, 
we we kind of talked about it, you know, how early on in the year he was chirping and chirping and chirping. And listen, man, sometimes when you chirp and you don't live up to it, people got to they get to hold that on you, right? So yeah, you know, he he wanted the ball and he's living up to it. He's a big play threat anytime he's on the field. He's that dude. And um, you know, he's a huge reason why why this team is being successful right now. I still wish that he could be because he's a big, strong kid. I still wish to see him a little bit more physical on, you know, on on blocking down down the field and on a couple screens. I saw him kind of like half half ass it a little bit, but I'll take what I can get, man. He's a phenomenal player. I can't. I still can't believe the Titans traded him. Right. <laughs> trade him the, the Titans have been good. The Titans. We about to talk about that. The Titans have been good to us. Oh, the Titans, the Titans have been good to the Eagles, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let me tell you that right now. The Titans have been good to us. Hey. Thank you. Tennessee. <laughs> we love you. Tennessee, thank you. Rabel. <laughs> Buddy, thank you. I don't know what the hell you're looking at, but thank you. All right, so this is why I say that A.J. Brown is balling for us. I know that, that I will always side with the team, so I don't like Jalen Hurts having extra pressure on him. But if you say something, you back, back it up, and he's doing that. And it reminds me, and he had to remind the team, hey, listen, we're going to do better when the office is run through me when it comes to passing. And that's how the Eagles went on their streak last year. The Steelers game is when it happened last year. They said, you know what? We're going to target him. Jason, Jason Kelsey talked about it a lot in the offseason. A lot. We had to give that dude the ball. And they do. He's stronger than everybody out there in the secondary. Yeah. He runs through tackles. You bounce off of him. He's strong and physical. He can run all the underneath routes, can go vertical. The dude is playing at a very high clip right now, all-time great clip as far as Eagles receivers and in the in National Football League. And there's still a lot of meat on the bone to go. Mm -hmm. But they did right. You target him with the most. Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard, those are your three. Everybody else is situational. And if you're mad about that, after those three, kick rocks. I don't care if your name is Julio, Quiz, <laughs> Lama Day, whoever it is, situational. Third down, red zone, two minute, four minute, everything else. Them dudes get the ball, <laughs> and that's and that's and that's how the, that's how the offense should be. You you got to figure out how to be a little bit more creative because I think Swift can beat some people on 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 be some slower linebackers out on goals and stuff like that. Those are situational plays though. So yeah. I think they did a great job by, by, by acquiescing to AJ Brown's demands. You always worry that will other players have resentment. They haven't shown that and everybody's still getting targets and have to make the best of them. Devontae Smith have to make the best of his targets. Can't put them on the ground. And so, but AJ Brown's playing at a very high level, very high level. Love and it. while we're talking about AJ Brown, and the Tennessee Titans and Rabel. <laughs> we got two former Titans on our team. Uh, three. We got AJ Brown. AJ Brown. We just got Kevin Byer today. Q, you want to talk about it? Because I, I got a lot of stuff to say about it. Listen, I, again, thank you. Thank you, Tennessee. I, <laughs> because, I mean, talk about. Perfect timing. Talk about perfect, like to fill a, a need. Mm -hmm. This is a, the how we how we hit it out the park with this one. All right, you got a ball hawk, ball Six. hawk safety, <laughs> strong safety, <laughs> physical downhill runner, one of the top players in the league in the secondary position. I mean, I just it's just beautiful thing, beautiful time. But I'll let you go because I know you got some good stuff to say. So, Kevin Byer since 2017 has led the league in interceptions. He has 27 picks since 2017. So that's around four picks a year. He doesn't have any interceptions this year. 
So that means that he's on track to get about four of them things with the Eagles over the next couple of games because that's just his, that's just history. Yep. I'm putting him down for at least four, <laughs> right? He's a great ball guy that, that gets the ball back. So the Eagles fans, you should be excited about that because he catches interceptions and he catches them at a high clip. And he's good in coverage and he will hit you. And he can play either one of the safety positions. Whatever they ask him to go, he can do it. I want you guys to look on the internet and type in what Tyron Matthews says about Kevin Byer. I have the most respect for Tyron Matthews and the way he plays the game. Yeah. A guy that's around the ball. Tyron Matthew believes that he's the best safety in football, in uh, at least one of them. Uh, that Kevin Byer is one of the, one of those guys. And when you when Tyron Matthew says that about you, Super Bowl champ, a guy that is one of the all-time great college football players and just one of the all-time great ball players, just just locating the football and have a knack to get it back. And when he says that about you, I believe it. So um, Kevin Byer, welcome to Philadelphia. We know that you're an upgrade from every safety that we have, but I'm excited about Reed Blankenship, Kevin Byer, um, you know, Brown. Bradbury, Bradbury, Slay, um, Roby. I mean, when that unit gets back, Q, I give it about three weeks to a month, right? Right, right in that playoff run time. This is going to be the best secondary in football. Oh, yeah. With this front? At about at a with this front. <laughs> and you got and you got a ball guy with this front. Byard is like, yo, I'm about to get six, <laughs> seven of them things. He had a year where he had, he had a year where he had eight. That's crazy. We had a year where he oh, had eight wait. picks. Yeah, so if you give him pass rush, he getting that ball back, baby. I'm excited about this one. <laughs> Me too. I'm excited about this one. Oh, I didn't understand, Q, because we didn't talk about this on this show. Julio Jones, I didn't understand the sign, uh, the, 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 the signing. Yeah, I thought that was weird. Adam and Jeff made a point. On the, on the pregame show because I didn't understand it. And they they were like, maybe they're bringing him in so Devontae can be in the slot and he can be on the outside because they, we, they have no backup outside guy. Because you got Quiz that's kind of an inside guy. You got Lamade Zakiz that's kind of, in, you got Kobe that's kind of an inside guy. Maybe Quiz can go outside sometimes, but Kobe and Lama days the kids, inside guys, and maybe they want to use them outside. He's never been like a, a big red zone target guy. Yeah. His touchdowns always kind of come outside of the red zone. So I didn't understand the signing. But when with if you say I want to put Devontae Smith back in the slot on third downs, I like that. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I agree. I thought it was <laughs> I, th I thought it was weird. And I actually thought the opposite. I thought, you know, maybe they're down on um on Quez and they want a big body presence in the in the middle of the field to kind of go opposite of of um of um Dallas. Yeah. And uh, you know, a lot of inbreaking routes. He can use his body because he you know, he doesn't have the same speed that he once had when he was a younger player. Talking about Julio. And so that was my first thought. Like, okay, they're going to move him to the slot. But now you say that, I can see that that probably makes sense as well. So um, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you can't it can't hurt having a, a player like Julio in your locker room. It can't hurt having a, a veteran, a guy that knows how to work, knows how to how to win in this game and how to be successful in this game. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it can't hurt. But, yeah. yeah, I thought I was a little bit of a head scratcher as well. Another thing, too, they need a guy to get receiver screen started. And I've been saying that for a while. You need a guy, and he can do it because he's always been a selfless guy, always blocking, always doing things like that. So you need a guy to get the screen started. You got your guy to do it. So I believe that adds another element on the, on the, on the edges for A.J. Brown, for Devontae Smith. Now you don't have to worry about Dallas being out there and giving it away. You can yeah. actually have a guy that, that'll be solid. So I think that that'll we'll, we'll see that in the next couple of games. That's yeah, fair point. Yeah, fair point. Yeah. yeah. So, Q, Eagles, best team in football? 
Yeah, yeah, nay. What says thou? Yes. <laughs> Best team in football. Best team in football? In, in the NFL. I think we are trending in that direction. And I believe in six, seven weeks, I, I think it'll be no question. I agree. Because if this team can stay healthy, Lord, let us stay healthy. Yeah. Our defense just got a, a lot better. Like yeah. a lot better. And if the offense can continue to sh to 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 trend in the right direction, stay away from the turnovers. We got to get away from the turnovers. Stop turning the ball over. Throw it away. With this defense, you don't have to do it all. Yeah, that's the thing that 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 Nick Sirianni got to like like put in Jalen's mind and the offense's mind. Hey, you guys, a punt. We don't like punting, but it's not a horrible play. <laughs> You know, yeah. you, it's okay. You don't have to win the game by yourself this year. Yeah. Don't turn it over. Give us 24 points and don't turn it over. That's it. I'm excited, man. And yeah. as, as we've been saying, they have not, across the board, complete, played a complete game. I'm talking about special teams, uh, offense, and defense. It's coming, and they're getting there. But uh, I'm I'm excited, man. This is super uh, excited. We got like listen, listen. This is uh, this is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'm starting. I'm starting. I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, I'm man. Starting to feel it's it. Beautiful feeling, man. It's Cam beautiful. Jurgens coming back. Sydney Brown is getting back in there. All these guys are gonna come back off our hard and soon. Like, yeah, we, we we ready, baby. We ready. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the Q&A show, everybody. Make sure that you send your questions to InsideTheBirds at gmail.com. Again, InsideTheBirds at gmail.com. Thank you, guys. Adam, Jeff, Josh, everyone at Inside the Birds. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check us out. It drops tomorrow. Make sure you get, give comments, feedback, whatever you have. We'll talk about it. Thank you, guys. I'm Jason Avant. Q got the last word. As always, man, it's a pleasure. I enjoy the show. Nothing better than being the Eagles fan right now. Can't wait, man. See you guys next week. Philly up. Red October. Go Bears! <laughs>